Hey, welcome everyone. Chris Petri here. Thanks so much for coming by. We're doing a beautiful composition here, a still life painting. We're going to incorporate a lot of fun, interesting items here. We're going to do um, a flower arrangement here and a mason jar, beautiful clear mason jar. We're going to add in a tomato, a green uh, apple, a uh, lemon, and a lime and a artist uh, brush here, a watercolor artist brush. We're going to create this whole painting beautiful tablecloth with some stripes on there for some colorful um, uh, details to the uh, table itself and we're going to have a great time we're going to do a little bit of a new format we're going to actually put on the live um, setup that I have across from me in my studio so if you can imagine right across from me to my right I have a table set up with the tablecloth and this whole still life here what I'll do is we'll do the drawing first then we'll switch over to the live camera on the still life I'll leave that on for like five or ten minutes. We'll come back, we'll do the uh, painting, and then we'll go back to that live setup again, and you'll be able to paint from the actual live uh, flowers with the fruit and vegetables and the paintbrush here, and you'll be able to actually do it um, along with me, but you'll also have the benefit of seeing a really good large um, picture of the actual setup so i'm hoping this is going to be really helpful and then toward the end of the video i'm just going to leave the camera run for like a half an hour so you'll have a whole half an hour of just having the still life set up on camera and you'll be able to work from that too as well you might you might just want to work from that the whole time and not really work along with my drawing and my painting you might just want to watch what i'm kind of doing working through my drawing and my painting and then you'll go and do the same thing you'll just have your set up right there on your camera on your uh, iPhone or your iPad or your TV however you have your your home computer however you have your setup I'm just uh, trying to incorporate a new interesting um, live kind of cam on the actual subject matter that we're doing this beautiful wonderful still life so let's get started hope you'll enjoy this video again lots of thumbs up and leave tons of comments in the comment section letting me know is this video something you want to see more of do you like the way we did this video or you'd rather just have it the other way we normally do it which is basically just working along um, without really showing the um, still life setup on camera and this is exclusively for still life obviously so that's something I can do in my studio I have a table and a light of spotlight and I can set up these things very easily in my studio I set up a new table and a spotlight and some other things uh, so it's easy for me to kind of do this type of video so if you do like this format let me know in the comment section that's the main thing I'm again always going to say I'm here to um, work for you to help you get uh, your watercolors uh, looking better and better all the time so if this is something that you feel is going to help uh, to kind of help you to pro progress more with your still lifes then let me know and I definitely will do more like this okay more videos like this all right so let's get started all right so we're gonna begin our still life painting um, pretty much uh, we're using some Arteza paper uh, sometimes I'll purchase some different paper usually I use arches and Fabriano exclusively um, but uh, for this uh, tutorial, I'm going to use some Arteza. Really nice watercolor paper. I've used it uh, quite a few times. I have a couple of uh, pads. And uh, this is the 140 pound. 140 pound, 11 by 14 pad, Arteza. Uh, so again, that really, really nice paper. Um, so I like to... Maybe I'll put it in the uh, comments section, in the comments section below, if you wanted to pick up some Arteza paper. Really good paper, actually excellent paper. Um, so let me uh, start out by just making a border around my paper here, my uh, sheet of Arteza rough watercolor paper. It's got a rough texture to it, not extremely rough. But uh, it definitely is a rough texture. And uh, so once I have that uh, border, I just draw a quick border around my paper just to kind of um, sort of, you know, solidify in my mind that I have my, my border around my painting, my composition. And then from there, I can start working uh, on my drawing. So what I'll do is I'll start working on the drawing now from my still life, which is across from me. And I'm going to do something a little different now on this video. What I'll do is 
after I draw the uh, drawing of this still life, which is going to be flowers and uh, uh, a lemon, an apple, a tomato, and a lime with a paintbrush, an artist brush, um, really beautiful um, composition for still life. What I'll do is I'll put into the video the uh, video camera. I'm going to take my video camera off of my uh, gear. It's like a, I have an overhead gear set up. It's like a large metal frame that I put my camera on. So right now you're you're looking at my camera up above, which is straight up above me, and that's on a metal frame that I attach my camera to. So what I'll do is I'll take my camera that's up above here. Take I'm going to take the camera, my camera off my video camera, and then put it on the table right here, and I'm going to look straight over across from me, and then I'm going to leave that on for like five minutes at a time so that you can see the actual still life, and you can work right from that. So I'm thinking this is really going to be productive. You're going to let me know in the comment section. You please let me know in the comment section how you like this. This is a little different than what I normally do, um, but I think it might be beneficial uh, and really helpful, and you might really enjoy this uh, type of... Um, uh, set up where I actually take my video camera and then give you five and ten minutes here and there of actual video camera live on my still life setup of my flowers and again the fruits and the setup that I have. Let me know in the comment section again below if you like this type of uh, video that I'm doing here, this tutorial, if it works for you. If a lot of you like it, I'll, I'll start creating my um, still life paintings like this um, going forward. Okay, so I'll start off now. I'm just going to be looking across um, my uh, my art table right now. I'm looking across from me over to my right-hand side. I have my um, still life set up on a table with a light, a, a spotlight on top of it. So you'll see that in just a few minutes. But what I'll do is I'll draw it first, and then I'll put it on for maybe five minutes. We'll put the live camera of the um, still life uh, on camera, and then you can work from that. And then we'll come back and we'll start the painting. And then we'll do the painting and then we'll do the same thing. We'll put the camera back on the still life so that you can paint from the actual still life. And then after that, we're going to actually leave the um, camera on the still life for another maybe 15 or 20 minutes. And this way you can actually uh, work on your still life even further for the next you know 15 or 20 minutes beyond our tutorial. So you'll kind of see how I'm going to have a lot of live coverage of the actual still life set up across from me that I'm working from so that you'll see that live on camera and you can work from that and you might want to just work from that the whole way through. Maybe you watch this video one time through, then you come back and you put it, you just put your video, uh, you put your YouTube, you hit play and you use the actual still life live coverage of the still life as your, um, you know, to work from. So this way you're not really working from my painting or my drawing, you're going to actually draw and paint from that actual live setup that I have across from me. So let's see how it works out. But I'll just show you how I'm going to draw this. I'm going to do it in a more expeditious fashion. I'm not going to take a long time to draw this. I'm just going to try to get the main idea of this still life um, completed for you. So the first thing I'll notice is that I will ignore some of the shadows in the foreground of this um, still life. So just want to let you know that. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to find out right now the location of the vase and flowers. And that's going to be right about here. I'm not going to... So it's about three quarters of the way across the paper. I'm going to start my vase with flowers. Okay, and again, I'm not going to take too much time here. I'm just going to try to I'm going to try to simplify in um It's the green apple there. Okay, so we have a green apple there. And then this here is like that. And there's some leaf forms inside the mason jar. So we have a mason jar here. And I'll just 
just put some indications of some stems inside the mason jar and leaf forms. And I'm going to stick with doing the mason jar and the flowers with this apple right here. This bit of uh, composition here. And I'm, again, I'm not going to get too fussy with everything. I'm going to kind of just give a loose indication of the the flowers, the flower shapes, but I'm not going to get really bogged down with all incredible amounts of detail. I'm just going to sort of get this in loosely. Like this. Hope, hoping that you'll see that I'm not getting too much detail. I want to just sort of get the main concept of what this is. It's a flower flower shapes in this uh, mason jar. Okay, and then there's some other absolutely there's some petal, petals. So there's lots of flower petals in here. But I'm not going to really I'm just going to draw some indications of some flower petals within this flower cluster here. And then I already have some of these leaf forms over here and here, so that's pretty good. And uh, we could also do the, um, maybe I'll just do the wire like that. There's a wire handle on the jar. So I'll put that there. Okay, now that I have my mason jar completed with my flower and leaf forms and my green apple here, I'm just going to move right over, kind of take a look over here and notice that my lemon is over here. So I'm going to create my lemon shape here. Like that. And I'll put in a little shadow under here. Not too dramatic with the shadow. I'm going to try to keep my shadows a little bit diminished from what I'm seeing across from me. So always remember, there's some shadows too here under the flowers. I'm not going to... Sometimes as an artist, you're going to take artist liberty to um, adjust, adjust as you go your shadows, you're adjusting things as you go, versus just not thinking about it. Think about things, say to yourself, ask yourself the question, do I want to make really long shadows here, or do I want to try to keep more of a minimal looking shadow pattern? And that's what I'm doing. I'm doing a minimal shadow pattern here. There is some shadows from the flower up above here, down here. So I will have some of that there. And then now the last thing we'll do, well, we'll have a few more things to complete here. Let's uh, do our lime over here. So we have our lemon here. Now I might have made that lemon a little closer than what I'm seeing, but I'm not going to worry about it right now. I'll do the lime over here. I'll make that lime pretty big to try to give us a feeling of three-dimensional quality. So... Okay, and again the shadow, not too incredibly large with my shadow, just enough to have some shadowing underneath that lime. Alright, so we have our lime, our lemon, our green apple, our red tomato, our mason jar with leaf forms, and our main flower shapes up here. Um, and what we'll do is, um, we'll take a, a basically... You can use a ruler once in a while. I like to use a ruler once in a while. I'm just going to take this ruler and kind of give myself a background line. And I'm going to just leave it level, I think, across. Uh, I might leave it like... I might make it like here. You can kind of adjust... You can adjust your... the back of your table to where you would find it suits you best in your composition. I think I like that. Again, have fun with this. 
when you're doing your compositions, you're doing still lifes, you know, if you're seeing, like when I put my still life that I actually have across from me, when I have that on camera, and you're going to see that in just a few minutes, you know, adjust it accordingly. Adjust it the way you want to. Maybe you're just going to kind of really use what I'm doing right here as your basis, but at least you'll have like the real picture of it of what I'm actually working from. So you can work from that same picture. Okay. So I did do a little something different here. And then, um, we do have some tablecloth with, um, patterns on it. So I'm going to go like this and make some lines on the, and then there's another line across here where the, uh, Mason jar is. And then there's another line there and another line here it gets a little bit uh, so you can kind of see how the lines angle a little bit this way and then as they come across here the tablecloth um, stripes kind of get a little more straight and then by the time they're right here they're almost straight and this one here is like this like that Okay, so I think we have everything we really need for our drawing. Let's leave it like this. And I wouldn't draw anything in the background. I would just leave that whole background white paper. And you might want to add a little color to it maybe when we're working on this. But I would say leave the background just white paper. I wouldn't put lines because there is some lines. Um, I have white. You'll see in the video in just a second or two. You'll see that I have my white uh, foam boards set up behind my still life. So I'm going to have white foam, foam boards back behind my flowers and my fruits and vegetables. So when you see those foam boards, you can just leave it just white paper. You don't have to really worry about making any lines like vertical lines, anything like that. You would just leave that white paper and not get distracted by it too much. If you want to add something in there to suggest a line or two, well, that's fine too. That's up to you. Again, you're the artist. You're going to kind of create this still life the way you want to. But I just wanted to mention that, um, you know, for me, I'm just going to leave it plain white paper and then have my still life set up here across. And I forgot one thing. I forgot my paintbrush. So here I'm going to actually draw my paintbrush here. So I hope you will do that too. And I'll just draw that off the paper like that. So I'll just leave it like this and go like that. So I'll draw that out of the picture, that paintbrush here that we have. Like that. Okay, good, perfect. All right, so now the next thing I'm going to do is cut over to the still life picture that you'll see on video, and I'll probably leave that up for about five minutes. And then we'll come back and we'll start painting. And then once we're done painting, we'll put up the still life picture again and you can paint from that. So you're going to draw and paint from the actual uh, live setup that I have right here in my studio. I'm hoping you'll like this. Again, you're going to give me a thumbs up. You're going to let me know in the comment section, hey, yeah, this is really good for still life painting. I like this a lot. Let's do this more. Or no, I don't like this too much. You let me know. Again, I'm always working for you, trying to help you in your watercolor journey. And I'm also getting better myself too by working. So we're all kind of benefiting from our work here, but I'm mostly concerned about your work and how things are working for you. So if you let me know you, if you like this type of new style of doing still life paintings with the actual live setup across from me, again, let me know. This is really important so that I don't, you know, go off the beaten track on in doing this often and you're not really happy with it. I want you to be happy with the videos, happy with my tutorials. So that's the main thing. Uh, I'm working for you and um, let's get right into it. Um, in just a second, you'll see the live setup and then you won't hear me speaking at all. It'll just be quiet. Actually, I'm going to be in the studio behind me doing some other things, but I'll leave the camera live on that setup for you. Okay. All right. And then I'll come back after that and we'll do the painting. We'll start getting our colors on the, uh, our washes on the paper. Okay. Be right back.
All right, let's have some fun. We're going to start painting. So you just saw the live uh, still life setup across in my studio across from me, across from my art table. I have it set up with spotlights uh, on a, a table with some uh, tablecloth. So you can you've worked from that. I'm ho I'm hoping you you did your drawing, your contour drawing, and your sketch from that uh, video we just had up for the last five minutes. Now we're going to do the painting portion. So I'm going to go in and I'm going to start getting my darks in. Uh, but I'll start definitely in the flower uh, arrangement in the mason jar that we have set up. So I definitely want to start there because that's sort of the central area that we're most concerned about. That would be like the focal point, the main focal point of the painting. Uh, of course, there is other um, focal points in this painting, but that one is pretty prominent. So we have um, sap green. I'll get my sap green going here. Maybe a little bit of um, raw sienna with that sap green. A little bit of uh, olive green, sap green, raw sienna. And then maybe a little bit of French ultramarine blue for a little bit of a darker shadowy color. And let's get that some of these leaf forms going here. All right, so I'll do that. I'll get my leaf form going here. And I just uh, dip my uh, brush in water. Then I take a little bit of water off the brush with a paper towel to get some feeling of light there. And then I'll go in and get a little bit more thick paint. And I'll maybe make a little bit of a darker bit of color there. So I'll make a shadow and a And then a, light, a lighter, brighter portion of this leaf here. So you can see I have the leaf a little bit brighter here. And then a little bit of the shadowing of that same leaf form over here, which is a little darker, which is out of the light. The light's coming from here. And then let's, uh, we'll come over here. We'll do some of these leaf forms here. These are a little darker. So let me go in and get a little more French ultramarine blue and uh, maybe a little bit of burnt umber there and just and a little more green. So I'll just make a little bit of a darker green over here, like this. And then another bit of darker green there. All right, we are working really well here. And I'll put a couple of darker green leaf forms here in the uh, top of the mason jar. And then we do have some stems. So there's some darker stems here. I'll just put them in while I'm working with the darks. These are dark stems. So I want to get those. Maybe I'll just start working them right in as we go. Like that. And then let's just work those greens and stems too down into the mason jar here. I'll take some water, rinse off my brush, dry off a little bit of the water. Maybe I'll get a little bit of the blue. Cerulean blue. Put a couple of bits of cerulean blue in here. Keep it kind of cooler the greens, a little bit lighter greens in there. And what I'll do is I'll change up from what I'm seeing and I'm just going to try to get in these these stems inside the mason jar. I'm just going to try to get those in like so. Like that. And again I'm working uh, kind of at a good pace. Let's get our green apple going here, which is going to be cadmium yellow lemon and some olive green. I think that looks pretty good for our green apple. And I'll put a highlight on my green apple right there.
So I just left a little bit of paper there for a little bit of a highlight on the green apple. And then I'll go right in and get some raw umber and some cerulean blue mixture here. And I'll try to tie right in with my shadow right away, which is cerulean blue and raw umber. So that I have a little bit of a shadow going there and it kind of blends right in to the bottom of the apple. Okay, that looks good. And next, I think I'm gonna let, I think I still wanna work on the flowers and I think it's, these uh, stems have started to dry, so that's good. So we can start maybe working in our flower shapes. Now what I, what I do for my flower shapes here is because the flowers are white, I'm gonna actually paint around them. We call that negative shape painting where you paint around an object to make the object appear. So I'm gonna just take a little more of these colors right here that we have and just start using those because we've already used them before and they look good. And then I'll just start maybe making some background colors like that. And maybe some shadowing in here. So I'm gonna kind of try to see if I can just get some I'm seeing some shadows, maybe a little bit of a uh, cobalt blue. For some shadowing that I'm seeing, so I'm just going to try to and there's a little bit of a dark center of the flower. Maybe a little bit of a mineral violet, uh, ultramarine violet, which is purple. I'll use a little bit of the purple for some shadowing. I'll put some of that purple ultramarine violet too in the vase. Like that. And here a little bit on the tablecloth just so that I have I'm starting to think about if I add a new color like the ultramarine violet let me add it down here in the vase a little bit okay and these are quite a bit in shadow over here and then again, let's get some cerulean blue. And maybe we're going to go around some of these petal shapes. And then we'll, we'll just maybe take that cerulean blue and just sort of work that out a little bit into the background. And then I'll take a little more cerulean blue here and just try to mix that in with that green bit of green that we put there. And I'll maybe do a couple splashes. And it's up to you how you want to blend in your your uh, background shadowing and colors on your back the background of your back uh, the back I guess I could call it the back uh, backstop or back, you know the uh, backsplash or the background of your painting here. You can kind of do it the way you feel, but I am trying to do a little bit of a. I'm going. I'm painting around the flower petals of this bouquet here in the mason jar. This bouquet of flowers. I'm painting around it as you'll see, so that I can kind of. sort of a neg again negative shape paint around those flower petals so that we can see them a little better and I can see that they're they're kind of gold there's some gold in them so I want to make sure I add some of that gold color if I get a t too big of a puddle I just lift it up with a tissue but I do see quite a bit of gold there and again I'm not going to crazy with uh, 
with my uh, my painting and my uh, details here. I'm just going to try to get some color in there, make it look believable that it's a uh, bouquet of flowers. And I hope that looks good. I think it looks okay. And there's again a little more shadowing over here. Okay, and then I'll add a little more cerulean blue here. I'll just add a little bit of splashing there. And a few more spots here and there just to loosen up a little bit, keep myself like thinking, not getting too tight with what I'm doing and, and too uh, fussing around too much. Okay, so I think that's good. Let's, let's, uh, I'll do one more. I think I'm going to do one. I'm going to do the tomato. I'm just going to go in and get some cadmium red and get that tomato started there. And a little bit of the uh, purple. And a little bit of that purple will be over here to make this a little darker over here. Could also use a little bit of burnt umber just to get that a little darker. Then I'll take my uh, brush. Rinse it off, take a little bit of water off the brush on a tissue, and then I'll just, and I'll leave a highlight on top of the tomato right there, and the shadow side of the tomato is over here. On the right side, you'll see that's a little bit darker, and then I'll do some, again, raw sienna, cerulean blue, and I'll just get a shadow in there like that. Just a little bit of an indication. All right, let's take a break and then I'll continue to paint until we get everything pretty much in looking good. And then we'll switch back over again to the video and then you can start painting from the actual live setup again. Uh, again, I, ho I hope you really like this video, the way we're doing it. And um, we'll uh, continue on in just a second. I just want to take a quick break and then we'll finish up our last few items here on our still life with our painting. And then we're going to go back to the video where you're seeing the live setup where you can start working and painting from that. sort of a neg again negative shape paint around those flower petals so that we can see them a little better and I can see that they're they're kind of gold there's some gold in them so I want to make sure I add some of that gold color if I get a t too big of a puddle I just lift it up with a tissue but I do see quite a bit of gold there and again I'm not going to crazy with uh with my uh my painting and my uh details here. I'm just going to try to get some color in there, make it look believable that it's a uh bouquet of flowers. And I hope that looks good. I think it looks okay. And 
and there's again a little more shadowing over here. Okay, and then I'll add a little more cerulean blue here. I'll just add a little bit of splashing there. And a few more spots here and there just to loosen up a little bit, keep myself like thinking, not getting too tight with what I'm doing and, and too uh, fussing around too much. Okay, so I think that's good. Let's, let's, uh, I'll do one more. I think I'm going to do one, I'm going to do the tomato. I'm just going to go in and get some cadmium red and get that tomato started there. And a little bit of the uh, purple. And a little bit of that purple will be over here to make this a little darker over here. Could also use a little bit of burnt umber just to get that a little darker. Then I'll take my uh, brush, rinse it off, take a little bit of water off the brush on a tissue, and then I'll just and I'll leave a highlight on top of the tomato right there. And the shadow side of the tomato is over here. On the right side, you'll see that's a little bit darker. And then I'll do some, again, raw sienna. Cerulean blue. And I'll just get a shadow in there. Like that. Just a little bit of an indication. All right, let's take a break and then I'll continue to paint until we get everything pretty much in looking good. And then we'll switch back over again to the video and then you can start painting from the actual live setup again. Uh, again, I, I hope you really like this video, the way we're doing it. And um, we'll uh, continue on in just a second. I just want to take a quick break and then we'll finish up our last few items here on our still life with our painting. And then we're going to go back to the video where you're seeing the live setup where you can start working and painting from that. Okay, let's move right along here. Let's get our, um, our lemon in now. So our lemon, I'm going to use the cadmium lemon yellow. That I think is going to be the local color, which kind of means that's the color of the lemon. Uh, I'm going to put a light. A bit of light there, a spot of light. So that's the local color. And then to add shadow and light to it, we can always lift up a little bit of paint with a tissue on the top like that. Then to add a little more shadow, we can add some yellow ochre underneath. Maybe a little bit of uh, cerulean blue. Like this. Cerulean blue for some shadowing underneath. We'll put our shadow under there, like so. Okay, so now we have our lemon completed. Let's do our... Uh, lime. So I'm going to use burnt umber. Sap green, burnt umber, and French ultramarine blue. Plenty of sap green. Okay, and then I'll get our color here. That looks good, nice and dark. And I will add a light a bit of light there. OK, 
Okay. That's our lime. And I think I'll add some yellow ochre. Cerulean blue. And we'll do a bit of a shadow there. Like that. You can always rinse off your brush, dry off a little bit of the water. You can also get a little bit of a reflected light underneath it, like that. That looks good. And let's do one more. Let's do our paintbrush. And then for our paintbrush, I'm going to go with Burnt Umber and French Ultramarine Blue. And a little bit of the uh, Burnt Sienna here, I think should be fine. A good dark. And then I'll just start out like this and go right across. Parallel stroke going across, nice and even, like that. Then I think I'm going to leave a little bit of a highlight on the brush there, here and there, not the whole the whole way. Like that. You see how I did that? I leave a little bit of a couple highlights on there? Good. I'll let that dry now, the paint, for a few minutes while I uh, work on the rest. I'll take a little bit of cobalt blue. And I'll put a little bit of a cool color there for the metal. Ferrule. Like that. Burnt umber, raw umber, for the hairs of the brush. Maybe a little bit of a darker underneath, like that. We'll just let that paint kind of dry a little bit before we add a shadow, but I think we're coming along really good. We could get some stripes going here. And then maybe I'll go with a red, red stripe here. And there's a green stripe there. And then a blue, let's do a blue stripe over here. green stripe here so you don't have to get too worried about every detail but let's get some and then again another red stripe here like that and then one more let's do a green one more green one here or blue like that good Good. So see how we got the basic. And then I'll just do a little bit of a shadow line along the back of the uh, wall. With some cerulean blue and red. I just try to make it. Try to make it interesting. And I just use some of the colors that we've already used in the painting. Then I'll just sort of do a little bit of swirling of paint. this just to kind of tie things together a little bit that looks good I, I maybe will like to just add a little bit of cobalt blue for a shadow under here maybe a little bit darker So 
So a bit of a darker shadow there. A little bit of purple. For the shadow underneath the flowers here. And a little bit of color for the vase. And then just a little bit of dark for the stem for this apple. And another little bit of just for that stem there. Okay, that's perfect. All right, so that is good. We're finished with our painting. Pretty much you can um, keep working on your painting. And again, I'll put back up the live still life setup across from us. I'll put that back up on the uh, video now. And you can continue to paint and work on your painting from that. And then at that point, we'll come back one more time and just do maybe a few touch-ups. And then we'll put the video back on again and we'll leave it on for maybe 15 or 20 minutes. So if you want to do any touch-ups or uh, maybe uh, just do another composition, a small composition with a few items like an apple or a lemon or a, uh, the lime, you know, you can practice just a couple things just on their own to get the feel for those too, if you want. It's all up to you. This is just a fun composition, fun exercise to um, keep practicing up on our skills as watercolor artists. So let's switch over to the other cam where we're going to have the, uh, again, the still life uh, up live for about maybe 15, 20 minutes.